Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India and welcome friends this is second uh, live session in this course introduction to political theory and i am mithilesh kumar jha your course instructor um in this live session first few minutes i would like to respond to some of the questions which uh, you have uh, asked on the spreadsheet that was uh, provided to you and also on the discussion forum and meanwhile i would also like you to um, write your comments and question on this um, 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 chat section in this live session and i'll respond uh, to them as well so um, uh, as you know uh, we are uh, going through a very uh, difficult phase of our life due to this global pandemic covid-19 and uh, exams uh, uh, have been postponed including uh, for this course introduction to political theory um, and uh, we are not yet sure about uh, when this exam will be uh, held um, as uh, and when such decisions are taken uh, you will be informed and will provide you the information but as per now we do not know Uh, when uh, such exam uh, could be conducted uh, anyhow so uh, 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 meanwhile you can use the discussion forum and also um, uh, during this live session uh, for your queries and comments uh, which i'll be very happy to respond so learning should continue uh, you can ask questions related to any of the topics which we have covered and also something which is related so in this live session one question is of that nature which is uh, not exactly from the topics which we have covered and yet it seems very uh, uh, connected to what uh, uh, we have discussed over the uh, 12 weeks uh, course so uh, the first question is by srinivas and um, and the question is what is the relevance of political theory and uh, this questions become uh, very uh, uh, crucial uh, especially in the times like this so what uh, role political theory can play in uh, the circumstances uh, we are in and there is no easy answer uh, to that and uh, as we have discussed in first few lectures that um, there was debate in 1970s and 80s that political theory is dead by um, um, arguing that political theory is dead many scholars believed that uh, political theory is too much embedded in political thought and also on the normative question and you know what is normative question in political theory is the question which deals with what ought to be rather than what is so what is the actual reality political theory has very little to say about it and therefore many scholars argued in 70s and 80s that uh, political theory is dead however we have seen that how political theory also um, uh, transform or evolve in not just um, arguing about the norm normative question but also explaining the realities the practical uh, problems and uh, that we face however while doing that it has maintain a degree of generality that means uh, political theory tries to explain a political phenomena in a particular context but while explaining it it also transcend that or uh, that uh, uh, particular context and that distinguishes political theory from say indian politics or american politics and so on and uh, we have seen that how political theory continue to Uh, help us uh, make sense of our politics uh, the complexities that is involved in the political arguments and so on so political theory as a discipline will uh, will remain a relevant um, uh, subject of inquiry so long as there is relevance for politics and uh, as you know that uh, 
our human life, um, uh, our collective life is deeply shaped and conditioned by the uh, politics. And politics is uh, understood usually in the narrower sense about the power. But politics is also about how to hold that power accountable, how to uh, uh, hold the power uh, responsible for uh, the things it does and how to make the society, state and governance better and better. And over the centuries, we have seen that how state, uh, the process of governance, the rule of law, demands for transparency and accountability has uh, developed and we are becoming more and more better governed society, community and asking question to those who hold power. So, so long as politics or political remain uh, important, we will have to engage with the political theory. So, uh, you cannot really set aside the question of normative which uh, requires. So, uh, in a political theory, there is a kind of first order theorization and the second order theorization. Second order theorization is basically about the facts and the figures that is there in the world and on the basis of that we develop an understanding or a perspective on politics. However, uh, society or community cannot avoid the moral question or the normative question and to deal with uh, moral question and normative question we will always need uh, political theory and uh, that is how I see uh, the relevance of uh, political theory um, now and in future. Uh, and without that, it is impossible to think about politics, to argue about uh, political, uh, political problems. So, political theory as a discipline uh, remain a very relevant uh, subject. So, that is my answer to uh, Srinivas question on the relevance of political theory. There is one question on this, um, can you also lecture on existentialism? And, uh, Okay, I will uh, look at your question which you are putting in the uh, chat box uh, in a while. Uh, I will like to answer this question on existentialism and I do not uh, get the exact name of the person who has put up this question, but uh, uh, we do not have a separate lecture on existentialism and we are not going to have one. But I will use a uh, few minutes during this live session to explain what is existentialism and what is its take on politics or human being um, as such. So, um, this uh, tradition of uh, thinking uh, such as empiricism we um, attribute to uh, Hume uh, or uh, rationalism or enlightenment thinking to Immanuel Kant. Uh, the tradition of existentialism is attributed to Jean Paul uh, Sartre uh, in the post uh, Second World War um, uh, Europe, particularly in uh, France. Uh, and uh, the central thematic of the existential philosophy is that there is no essence of human being or there is no essence of human life. We, in other words, the existence of human being precedes any kind of essence that we attach to it. So, you can think of Plato, Aristotle or uh, um, even Descartes. Uh, we try to understand human being by attributing certain essence and for Plato and Aristotle in um, you know um, and their uh, philosophy that human being ought to behave according to his innate nature. So, there is a kind of essence in human being in different classes and they are ought to behave and act according to that essence. Existentialism denies any such essence that we attribute to a uh, human being. Human being through his life choose how to become, how to act. So, um, uh, existentialism um, um, argues about um, a um, um, self which is a practical embodied being in the world. So, we realize ourselves, 
we get meaning in our uh, life when we participate in the world or when we choose to participate in the world. So, there is as such no predestined meaning available in the world for the human being. Human being seek the uh, meaning when he or she act upon his life. So, uh, in a sense there is no preordained um, essence uh, uh, to uh, human life. You can uh, trace this kind of philosophy to um, uh, certainly Martin Heidegger being and time and also uh, Nietzsche, uh, the idea of uh, God is dead and nihilism. So, there is no uh, meaning um, available already. So, there is a kind of void, there is no uh, right and wrong as such. We human being make something uh, out of our uh, life by acting upon, by deciding the act of choosing therefore, becomes uh, very important. And uh, the root of this kind of thinking is also in Edmund uh, Husserl, where he talks about the phenomenology as an approach to arrive at uh, certain forms of knowledge. In contemporary times, when you look at the gender studies, particularly by Judith uh, Butler, uh, when uh, she argues about the performities. So, uh, there is a streak of line, but there are many uh, scholars who are not uh, uh, um, who are not willing to accept this level of existentialism. However, their thought uh, is somewhat uh, 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 influenced by the existential uh, philosophy. And even in Sartre as a uh, uh, philosophy, it is more in the field of literature. So, uh, nausea and other kind of texts which he wrote is uh, more about this kind of uh, philosophy than his uh, 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 philosophical texts like being and nothingness and so on. So, existentialism as a uh, philosophy is basically about uh, uh, this kind of argumentation where human life is seen when it choose to. Uh, make something out of its life. Without that, there is no pre-given meaning or essence either to the human being or to the world uh, world as such. So, that is on existentialism, uh, which we are not going to uh, have a separate lecture on that. And if you have any further question, you can uh, put up in the discussion forum and we'll, I will be happy to respond to that as well. Some of you have also asked about the missed assignments and that is uh, uh, a, um, a very, uh, uh, what to say, um, serious uh, issue and especially for uh, those of you who have uh, registered for the course and you have missed some of the assignments. So, uh, as you know, uh, for the uh, grading of this course, we have allotted about 25 percent of marks to the assignment. So, uh, for 12 weeks you have had um, uh, 12 assignments and um, uh, the uh, marks that is assigned to these 12 assignments is based or uh, 8 out of uh, uh, 12. So, uh, uh, we are going to include your best 8 assignments in, we, in which you have performed better to calculate the mark which is assigned for the assignment. So, even if you have missed one or two or even three assignments, still you can um, um, uh, be assured about the inclusion of your marks for the assignments, because uh, uh, finally, uh, we are going to calculate the best eight out of uh, 12 assignments. So, if you have done uh, at least eight, uh, you should be uh, 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 sure about gaining that 25 percent. If you have missed one or uh, two uh, even among the eight, then I will suggest uh, at this point we cannot accept any submission of assignments, except if there is a genuine reason we will look into it and uh, we will get back to you. Uh, and I request you to focus more on the um, final examination, which will be of uh, multiple choice question there will not be subjective uh, questions and do well uh, in the uh, final examination, which um, um, has about um, 
75 percent is. So, uh, that is on assignments and uh, uh, as you are aware in this given circumstances, uh, we do not have a certain date which I can tell you when exam will be conducted, but whenever such decision is taken, uh, we will certainly inform you through discussion forum, through your mails and so on. Uh, the nature of end semester quiz um, exam would be as I said the multiple choice question and there will be no subjective um, answer uh, required uh, during the final uh, examination. So, you will have the choice and the component would be on the basis of assignments, recall and also your understanding of the concepts uh, and that is uh, part of uh, this course. So, the question will be based on that. Uh, analytical assessment of your understanding of the themes and contents that is part of the course. Okay, uh, uh, before I take the question that you are putting up in the um, chat box section, uh, there is one more question which I would like to respond is by Disa and uh, the question is what is the best form of government according to Plato and uh, this question is uh, something which is uh, I believe um, more appropriate in a course on western political thought, but however I would like to uh, respond to this question. So, uh, Plato as you know um, uh, first thing first that uh, uh, we use uh, state and government interchangeably, but uh, there is a difference between state and the government. So, uh, and in modern liberal democracy it is much more obvious that uh, the government comes and go every five years and a state is something which is a permanent body which is a kind of abstract ideal which unite not just the government, but also the territory population and a nation of us, uh, notion of sovereignty. So, uh, if you talk about the uh, notion of ideal state according to uh, Plato. His ideal state is a state which is ruled by philosopher king and he has this specific notion of philosopher uh, king where um, he uh, or she is equipped to uh, in the dialectics or understand the nature of the uh, political which is not accessible to uh, other uh, classes in the state. So, for instance, uh, uh, Plato divides this uh, population into three classes, um, artisans, guardians and the philosopher king. And um, um, when they all work according to their um, uh, uh, capabilities, uh, the um, state perform in a much more ideal manner. So, here is a kind of organic understanding of a state where the government is not disconnected with the population or the other sections in the society, but they all work together to give a coherence or a kind of effectiveness to the um, to the state. And of course, that state is uh, limited both in terms of geography and also in terms of population. So, for Plato, the uh, ideal state is a state which is ruled by the philosopher king. So, either the king should be the philosopher or the philosopher should be the king. And uh, when uh, uh, you have a state which is ruled by the philosopher, you will have the state or the government which would be the ideal state. And you know in the political thinking and theorization, we always aspire to something better, something ideal. And to have it, Plato argues about um, the um, uh, state which is ruled by the philosopher king. However, subsequently he revised uh, this ideal because uh, ideal is not always practical. So, uh, he also failed in uh, experimenting when he got the opportunity to make a ruler uh, the philosopher. Uh, he uh, failed and then subsequently revised his notion of ideal state in laws and states men. Nonetheless, in Plato's republic the ideal state remains um, uh, the state ruled by the philosopher king. Now, let me uh, take the question um, which you are putting on this. So, Jaya Sudha is asking about, uh, okay, so uh, she is declaring about the BCC Hindu College uh, channel, okay. Hello, all uh, Abhishek uh, Gulati from 
the Vaughan versus Institute of Engineering. So you are introducing yourself. Okay. Now. Uh, Okay, so um, uh, Ranjana Sarkar is also asking you good afternoon, Ranjana. So, once again, let me um, 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 request you if you have any question and dots, please um, uh, uh, mention it in the chat box and I will be happy to respond. And I am uh, uh, very happy that you are introducing yourself and good to know about your background. And some of you are teaching in different colleges and university and do share your uh, feedback on the course and its contents as well. Uh, hello all my silkar kar kalayar c karikalan from avs college of arts and science Perrier university hello okay, i am the Yes, I'm Jyoti Barai asking about uh, introducing herself as uh, Chandi Bai Himatlal Man Sukhani College from Mumbai. So, um, I have not uh, got any question uh, as such. You have uh, um, introduced. Uh, yourself in uh, this live session. Please also uh, uh, put up any question or dots that you may have and I will be very happy to um, respond to them. And um, I have enjoyed interacting with you on the discussion forum, responding to your uh, queries and uh, comments. And um, before uh, uh, final exams um, happens, you can still use that discussion forum for any queries and comments. And also, uh, whatever times uh, we have now, you can um, uh, put up your question uh, in this uh, live chat section as well. Or um, uh, particularly those of you who have uh, asked the question on the Google spreadsheet that was provided to you and the answer which I have provided if you uh, uh, have to ask anything further you can also uh, do that. Okay, so uh, it is a good experience to uh, interact uh, with you. Um, so we have. <laughs> there is a question by uh, someone, Carmel Maths. As a teacher, apart from academic duties, what are the other social activities? Yeah, I. Uh, uh, really um, uh, want to say that uh, ultimately uh, this is a good question for all of us to reflect upon and um, in the recent um, years uh, uh, we have uh, we have been living a life where we are too much determined or uh, guided by the forces of state or the market and somehow we uh, find ourselves um, uh, not having enough time for the community and for the society and it is true for any other profession and it is equally true for the academics as well. But ultimately I think uh, we all belong to a uh, society or a community and whatever our professional roles we are also responsible for the society or the uh, for the community and uh, uh, the expertise that we have as a uh, professional uh, we can use also for the um, betterment of uh, the society and uh, i think uh, it is equally applicable to uh, the academics as well 
uh, one uh, should engage uh, with the uh, community or the uh, uh, society. So, besides teaching and research which is the primary uh, responsibility of an academician, um, uh, academician is also seen in many society as the conscience keeper uh, which uh, um, uh, uh, he or she uses on many political uh, uh, issues where uh, there are you know uh, different parties taking different position and none of them are um, um, uh, you know uh, seriously um, uh, resolving the problems that majority of population faces. So, suppose in the contemporary times during the COVID many migrants and other uh, poorer sections of the society faces many uh, problems. So, uh, for the academicians uh, the task is not just to teach and research. Uh, the socially conscious academician will also uh, be someone who highlight the problems that society face and bring it to the notice of those who are in the power or those who are in the government. And you may find in your um, um, uh, life um, many uh, academicians and uh, scholars argue uh, about uh, the uh, voiceless or those who do not have uh, enough uh, power living at the margin of the society. So, uh, there are many ways in which uh, a teacher or an academician can uh, perform his or her duties and we all do. Udisha, glad you are here. So, can you please tell what are David Easton's views on decline of political theory? Yeah, so, uh, this, is, this is part uh, uh, a few minutes ago I discussed this um, uh, question of the decline of political theory. So, you know in um, uh, western uh, tradition uh, the positivism which was influenced by science and the objectivity uh, um, and consistency that is available in the scientific experiment. There is this belief that um, uh, in social sciences as well particularly in the political science we should develop a model which will work in all the contexts. So, we do not have to think about the specificities of a particular context. So, system theory or a structural, um, uh, a structuralism or behavioralism was, uh, uh, was uh, influenced by this positivist uh, tradition in uh, social sciences and there uh, was also this uh, uh, differentiation between first order political theory and thought and the second order political theory. So, first order would deal with the normative question or the moral question. And the second order is seen more as a, you know uh, uh, engaging with the political problem as it exists in the society or in the community. David Easton system theory was uh, in um, uh, accordance with that mode of thinking where he was um, um, working on developing a model which will explain the political uh, condition in uh, any society without any consideration to the specific cities or uh, the context. So, uh, with the rise of positivism there was this uh, uh, understanding that uh, there is not much gain by engaging with the political thought or the philosophy of the past years. So, um, in uh, the tradition of uh, political thought you have is so much of disputation. So, uh, Aristotle differs from um, uh, Plato, Rousseau differs from Hobbes and Locke, Marx differs from Hegel and really in actual real practical life we do not get much answer from such uh, disputation. So, there is a kind of um, uh, understanding that uh, political theory is dead or uh, declined. But nonetheless as if you recall first few lectures in this course, we have seen that how political theory transform itself and continue to be relevant not just by engaging with the normative theory which remains the core task in um, uh, political theory that you have to reflect, you have to generalize. But while reflecting and generalizing you also have to engage with the practical problems, so exploratory and other kinds of uh, political theory that we have discussed in the course 
is in accordance to that kind of thing and there is a kind of revival or reassertion of political theory also and in answering the one of the question about the relevance of political theory in the beginning of this live session i have also said that how political theory remains a very relevant uh, subject so long as uh, politics is important for human society and um, uh, when politics is uh, relevant one cannot avoid the normative or moral question and to engage with the moral and uh, normative question you require political theory so that is my response to the eastern views on uh, david eastern uh, views on the decline of political theory uh, plato i uh, there is a pragati uh, satyaram asking what uh, point explain about plato so i am planning to offer one course on western political thought also this is a kind of self uh, promotion uh, you you uh, you, uh, you uh, are welcome to enroll and register for that course as well about the plato on the question of um, uh, ideal state i have just said that he was thinking about uh, an ideal uh, state which is very different from our own uh, uh, contemporary states both in terms of geography and territory and how to lead a good life in uh, in a state or in a uh, polity the argument provided by plato is when we act according to our nature there is some innate nature some essence in all of us and he divides this uh, population in three section artisans and traders and guardians the military uh, uh, commanders and uh, uh, warriors and philosopher king and all these three sections are um, um, guided by their own essence and they can uh, lead in uh, good life or then ideal life when they act according to uh, to to uh, their own uh, nature and what kind of polity allow them to act according to their own nature there he conceptualized the idea of uh, a, uh, a state which is ruled by the philosopher king so very briefly on plato i'll say that for more you are welcome to uh, uh, enroll and register for the course i'm going to offer next semester on western political thought Manasi uh, Kedari asked, "What sir, please suggest some good books on political theory." Uh, Manasi, if you um, go to the um, uh, uh, first few lectures in this course, uh, the last slide of each lecture, I have explained um, uh, different uh, books, but for uh, your information i'll uh, also provide some uh, books here and uh, you can refer to certainly one book is by rajiv bharga and ashok acharya which you should uh, refer to and uh, then by uh, h john and g paul introduction to political theory from pearson education you can uh, refer g gerald uh, political concepts and political theory you should uh, uh, refer to brian berry liberty and justice essay in political theories another uh, good book um, and then there are many other uh, texts which i have provided in um, um, the ppts uh, which uh, you can refer to to know more about uh, the reading certainly john hoffman and paul graham introduction to political theory uh, published by ruthless in two, uh, 2015 is a very good book to understand different concepts uh, in uh, political theory 
So, uh, and besides for each uh, lecture, as I have said, uh, the last slide of the lecture uh, deals with uh, uh, the key text or key references which you should refer to understand that particular uh, topics which I have uh, discussed in that particular lecture, uh, which I will uh, recommend you to uh, refer to. So, I hope I answer your question. So, uh, I hope uh, I have answered uh, some of your questions and uh, if you have uh, some question or dots on any of the topics which uh, 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 you can use on. Um, thank you uh, Manasi. So, um, those questions and comments I encourage you to uh, raise on the discussion forum and you will get the uh, reply from us within uh, 24 hours as have been the practice. And uh, I once again uh, thank you for enroll. Is there any more question? Okay. Yeah, so uh, there is one suggestion by uh, uh, Vignesh about introduction to political theory by O. P. Gawa. This is also a very good textbook on political theory, which I will recommend you to, uh, to use. And uh, so, Mansi uh, is asking that sir, please give links of your previous lecture. So, Mansi, uh, I think uh, this course is on NPTEL uh, website or on SWAM forum. So, if you type uh, if you go to that website and type this course introduction to political theory, you will get access to all the lectures or um, the PPTs or even the transcripts of all the lectures uh, and um, uh, that I hope you can visit and uh, watch and also give comments to. But now it is too late to enroll or register for this semester. If it is rerun in the next semester or next years, you can um, enroll and register. So, uh, uh, that you cannot do, but you can certainly access the um, videos and lectures. And you can also go to the IITZ NPTEL uh, YouTube uh, website. Um, and uh, on that, you can go to my uh, course and watch all the videos that is available. So, uh, let me conclude this um, live session by uh, once again thanking you all for um, your participation in this live session and also for enrolling and registering for this uh, course. I will really appreciate if you give your uh, feedback on the course, the contents and the teaching methodology that I have followed. And um, whatever um, uh, uh, learning outcomes uh, you have while doing uh, this course. So, I look forward to your uh, uh, feedbacks and uh, suggestion. It help us improving the course contents and also the teaching uh, methodology. So, I will be very happy to hear from you and uh, I once again thank you for enrolling, registering for this course and um, your regular participation on the discussion forum and also during the live session. I once again request uh, those of you who have registered for this course, if you have any question, comments, you can um, put it on the discussion forum and you will uh, get the resp uh, response. So, uh, during this um, COVID-19 uh, uh, situation, I s uh, uh, wish you that uh, you uh, uh, keep uh, healthy and keep safe. Uh, okay. So, um, there is a question by uh, someone uh, who can start political party. So, this is not exactly uh, related to this uh, course. Um, uh, I mean, um, you know, in 
in I assume that you are asking in the context of India or in any uh, context uh, or in any other uh, liberal democracies, uh, all citizens are um, uh, given this right to form any association including the political party. However, uh, to fight an election in India, you have to register with the election commission of India and there is a proper procedure for registering your uh, uh, political party. So, you can form the party. So, any group or any individual or any organization can float a party, but that party has to register uh, with the election commission of India to uh, uh, participate uh, in the election. So, I hope that is the brief answer to uh, your question. So, um, uh, 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 political party is something which uh, can be formed by any groups, any uh, there is no restriction, there is no limit to who uh, can form the party and if you look at the number of party, it is more than thousands uh, in India. Of course, those are recognized but unregistered. However, the registered parties are those who perform better in the election. So, these are state parties or national parties, where there are many parties, majority of them which is registered with the election commission of India, but are not uh, 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 recognized party, either as a state party or a national party. To be uh, recognized as a state and national party, that party has to perform uh, or fulfill certain criteria in the assembly or in the uh, general election. So, that is my answer to you um, um, and to all of you, I will uh, uh, wish you good luck and uh, keep safe and uh, best of luck for your final exam. So, that is all for this live session today. I hope uh, I have answered to some of your queries and comments. Uh, you are uh, welcome to uh, uh, ask any queries and comments on the discussion forum if you have registered. If some of you who have not registered or enrolled, uh, you can still watch all the lectures which is available on IITG and PTL YouTube uh, website. So, you can go to that and watch all the videos. Do uh, uh, share your comments and feedbacks, I will be happy to respond. So, thank you all, thank you for participating and joining this live session. Thank you and best of luck for the uh, final examination.